We are back in Las Vegas, Nevada for night number two of the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge. The track has been changed over as we bring back Thunder Alley in Vegas style racing. Last night, Team Ice won both competitions and now have a comfortable lead with Team Fire still hot on their heels looking for the overall win. It's night number two of the All-Star Challenge. This is Las Vegas and this is Monster Jam. Welcome back to Sam Boyd Stadium, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's night number two of the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge. And last night, Team Ice dominated with Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger winning our racing competition. And Brianna Mahan and Whiplash winning the best trick competition. Team Fire has their work cut out for them tonight. Two more incredible competitions coming up. We bring Vegas-style racing back to Sam Boyd Stadium and right into freestyle. Morgan, you won the world championship here in 2016. Talk about that transition from a Chicago-style track back to Vegas racing. Well, I think anytime you go into a weekend, you know, you want to be comfortable in the truck and they got a lot of seat time last night. Um, but the biggest transition that I'm going to see as a driver, the challenge of the track is that normally when we come to Las Vegas and we run this Vegas style racing, you have practice passes and you have qualifying passes to lay rubber down through Thunder Alley on the starting line. And they're not going to have that now. You know, this is brand new dirt. They're laying it down. They're making sure that everything is nice and flat. Um, but I think you're going to have a lot of marbles on the top. So we'll see how that goes. I think you'll see some slow times in the first round, but I think that it will get faster as the night goes on. And Leslie, last night, some wear and tear both on the Monster Jam trucks and the driver athletes. You were back there all night with them. Talk about the, the mentality and the psyche that our driver athletes have coming into night number two of this epic competition. There were a lot of hard hits last night, and our technicians are great back there, and they're going to have everything fixed. But it's all about those practice passes to shake down the truck, and Morgan is exactly right on that. Everybody is worried about that because they need those trucks squared, in line, and locked down tight if they are going to make it through the chicane and that hairpin turn down at the end. The other thing that they're a little worried about is kind of transitioning from Vegas racing to freestyle all in the same event. So I wonder if guys are going to be a little bit more conservative on the finish to try to save their truck. It's Viva Las Vegas with Moss. Monster Jam back, night number two of this incredible all-star challenge. One team will prevail, Team Fire versus Team Ice. Who's it going to be? We're going to find out next, only on Monster Jam. Let's take a look at the track map for tonight. There's Thunder Alley coming down. Thunder Alley inside the stadium. That J-hook, that quick turn across the finish line. Our captain selected the racing bracket and the freestyle order. Let's take you back. So our captain's draw today was a little bit predictable when it came to our freestyle competition. It looks like it might be a normal Monster Jam show, except for the fact that Tyler Meninga is going to run in the fifth position. That's where he told me he wanted to go. He wanted to go out early and make a statement. Now things get a little bit more interesting here with our racing bracket. You'll notice some familiar matchups from just one day ago with our Chicago style racing. You're seeing Team Fire versus Team Ice, Max D versus El Toro Loco. Our captains down here paired up against each other. And then we've got all the ladies in the same corner over here. And this is the exact scenario that we had just one day ago. Probably one of the most interesting matchups came with the very first pick. Tyler Meninga from Team Fire called out Monster Energy's Todd LaDuke for Team Ice. He said he lost to him just one day ago. He wanted a rematch right away, right off the bat. Now, Team Ice was a little apprehensive to give him that matchup. However, they finally gave in, and then they matched it up with Cody Saussier with the bye run. So that is a very, very tough corner of the bracket. Last night, Team Ice dominated racing. They only had one competitor in the final eight. They got all 90 points in the semifinals. And in the head-to-head -head matchups, Morgan, Team Ice 11-4 against Team Fire last night. Team Ice has so much individual talent, but this is a team event. They are going to have to work together for Team Fire and really be able to push it. And
anything to be improved on. With this long straightaway, it's so important that the Monster Jam driver athletes get off the starting line so fast and get that advantage because that J-hook is where you'll be won and lost. So getting that advantage in the starting line is where you want it. Here is Corey Rummel in Megalodon Fire. Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt, Dalmatian Ice, and Megalodon Fire hitting the turn tire. He will be done. And it is Monster Mutt, Dalmatian Ice still with some problems, and she didn't get across. So just when you think Corey Rummel is done, he gets a second chance. But it is Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice that gets the faster time, 18.245. It's all about quick reaction times here. You have to be quick off the line. You got to be quick in the chicane and quick in the J-hook corner. But here, team captains going up against each other again. Same thing as last night. They're carrying so much speed here, almost 70 miles an hour here at the All-Star Challenge. Tom Mintz clips the corner and rolls over an unlikely mistake there. But let's note that all the drivers normally sit in the center. Tom Mintz, Neil Elliott, in their trucks, they sit on the left side. So it's tough for them to see the turn poles. Scott knew that as a captain. Great pick for lane choice. Nice job for Team Ice. Lane choice is so important here, especially in round number one. And again, eight drivers have already advanced into round two, so we'll see them after these round one matchups. Here is Colton Eichelberger in Max D, repping Team Fire against Cole Bernard in the Black Pro, representing Team Ice. A nice turn for both drivers, and it looks like Eichelberger a little more inside on the turn, and he's gonna take the advantage and the win for Max D and Team Fire. Camden Murphy always talks about how this Vegas track is not good to him, and he has so much bad luck here. And I asked him earlier today how he was going to stay loose and stay confident. And he said one way that he does that is joking around in the pit. So if we see him laughing and kind of cutting up with his crew members, that means he's trying to relax himself because he's got that think long, think wrong mentality to where if he sits in the truck and he's too focused on it and he thinks about the track too long, he's going to overthink it, and that's when he makes mistakes. And I'm going to be brutally honest here. The elephant in the room is Camden Murphy when it comes to Las Vegas has a history of red lighting. I don't care how relaxed he is in the back. He better be on his A game because Neil Elliott and Max D, he is a fast racer coming into the J hook. Both of them are pretty even. Camden carrying a lot of momentum. Neil looks like he let off the gas a little bit to get around the turn pole. But hey, it is what it is. On to the next round, Camden Murphy, Bakugan Dragonoid. Well, the luck might be changing in Vegas for Camden Murphy, so there's a blue lane with bad company in it and an empty orange lane. Brodozer can't make it to the starting line, so John Gordon and bad company representing Team Ice just has to take his time, feel out the track, and cross the finish line, and he will advance into round number two. This is such a big advantage for John because he gets a chance to feel the track out with no competitor in that lane because he would have probably lost that one if he bobbled in the corner like that. I'm really excited to do this track. I only ran Vegas one time before this, but in Orlando, we had the really long straightaway and the tight turn at the end, and I seem to have it figured out pretty good. So uh, if I get in left lane, I think I'm gonna be fast. Well, she is in that left lane. Let's find out if she's fast. A rematch from last night. Kristen Anderson, Grave Tigger Ice, and Scooby-Doo with Lindsey Reed behind the wheel. Kristen Anderson getting a little wobbly coming down the chicane, and she's going to go upside down. And now Scooby-Doo with some issues. Lindsey Reed can't seem to get out of her own way, and it looks like she blew the motor. She No, no, Kristen has to finish. She has to cross the finish line because if Scooby-Doo has some major breakage, she can't make it back. As soon as Tyler Menega left the pits, he communicated to his crew chief, Nick Mole, that he did not have second gear. So you can see now the guys have got the transmission out, but it's on limited time now. Normally, this is a 15-minute job. Tonight, it has to happen much faster than that. Gravedigger was supposed to be in the first round matchup. They've dropped him to the last pair of round one, so the clock is ticking. So that's an all hands on deck situation, Morgan. We saw your crew chief Parker Hatcher back there helping out as well. Well, definitely with all hands on deck, you got to make sure that you get the guy back in it that called someone out because anytime you do any big time talking off the track, you got to be able to back it up on the track. So as a driver, I want to be as humble as I can, but Todd looks like he might be just cruising around right now. If, if I was a driver in this situation, I would be getting a good practice pass in to make sure that I'm comfortable for round two. And we all know Tyler Duke has more confidence than most drivers in Monster Jam, but Morgan, if you were gonna call somebody out, it's one thing to lose, 
but you gotta at least make it to the starting line if you're gonna run your mouth. Yeah, Scott, I 100% agree. You gotta be humble in this game. We move on to round two of America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses Racing. If you're keeping tabs in round one head-to-head, -head, it was even four to four when it comes to Team Fire versus Team Ice. So a much better night tonight for Team Fire. They started off a very slow yesterday, now have even the field a little bit. A lot of work to come. Round two of racing is next. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses. It's not just a better deal, it's America's Best. We are back with night number two of the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge at Sam Boyd Stadium. Eight Monster Jam Superstar Driver athletes have advanced into round two. They will meet the eight drivers that are awaiting them after advancing to the first round due to the bracket draw. So here is a look at your America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses round two racing bracket. Four to four, fire versus ice. More of that to come in round two. Let's go down to Leslie. This is the first year for Vegas style racing where there's not qualifying or any practice before all the trucks run and Cody Saucier thinks that's going to be a definite advantage for him. He's ran on this track a lot and he's got a 15 and 5 record out here tied for third for best winning percentage and he thinks he's really going to be able to bring it home tonight for Team Ice. Tom, the in round two, that gives the Black Pearl of Colvinar behind the wheel an opportunity against the oh-so-fast Cody Saucier in Monster Energy. The Black Pearl a little wide on the turn, and Monster Energy taking advantage, and Cody Saucier will now advance into the quarterfinal round. Both of them are fast times, but, I mean, the difference is that corner down in the back. you got to make sure that you're keeping that as tight as you possibly can. Well, that was Team Ice versus Team Ice. We now move on to our second matchup, Team Fire versus Team Fire. It is the great Eclipse Mohawk Warrior Fire against Zombie Fire. So two incredibly resilient drivers in Barry Musauer and Bryce Kenny and Zombie Fire off the line down the chicane a little faster. Great Eclipse Mohawk Warrior working to get things done. And nice tight turn, but he gets the turn caught. And Zombie Fire at the end accelerating and taking the win. The closest race we've seen all weekend here. Man, what a race. That was insane. And, and it's unlucky for Bryce Kenny because you come around the corner and you got that momentum. You think you're going to clear the turn pole and just a little clip will throw you off. So another ice versus ice matchup we have yet to see in this round. Fire versus ice. Either way, no matter who wins, ice is moving on in this spot. It is John Zimmer and Dragon Ice, Cynthia Gauthier, Monster Mutt, Dalmatian Ice. They help put these teams together at the All-Star Draft. And John Zimmer in Dragon Ice takes advantage of that turn and gets enough separation. He's moving on to round three. It's a good solid pass from John Zimmer. He always is solid here. But his other teammate, the captain, Scott Buteau, El Toro Loco Ice. There's Charlie Palkin, Grave Digger Fire. This is going to be a great matchup. Who can get out of the box through the chicane as fast as they can as they get down to the corner? Hopefully, it's still pretty even. Charlie with a slight edge. And Scott Muto getting up on the two wheels, crossing lanes. And Charlie Pock and Gravedigger fire with a big win so far tonight. This was the rubber match for Fire versus Ice. So now five to four in favor of Team Fire head to head. Colton Eichelberger, Max D in the orange lane. Ryan Anderson and son of a digger in that blue ice lane. And down the chicane they come through Thunder Alley. Ryan Anderson and son of a digger has won a world championship on this very track. And it's the ability to turn like that that got him to the top of the mountain. So another great win in Vegas for Ryan Anderson and son of a digger. They pull into the line for our next race. Adam Anderson, Grave Digger for Team Fire, Team Ice, John Gordon, Bad Company. It's going to be a good race. These two are great racers. John has got a great stance in the starting line. I want to point that out because you're going to be able to make the best of the turn and carry all your speed into the chicane. Adam Anderson coming into this weekend 24 and 9 in his career in Las Vegas. Three Racing World Finals championships, and they both get a little wobbly coming around that turn. But Adam Anderson and Grave Digger able to reset, gets it straightened out, and he moves on to round three. Man, I'm not sure what happened to John, but that was a great start off the line into the chicane. Tough little break for him, but Camden Murphy, the lucky boy himself, pulls up against Jim Kohler, Avenger. I know that this is a team fire matchup that they would rather both of them move on, but head-to-head -head here in Las Vegas for the All-Star Challenge. 
Camden's going to bring some speed down this. Locking up the brakes. You see a little glow from him. They're getting real hot now. Coming to the finish line. Tight one. Camden moves on to the next round. Camden Murphy changing his luck in Bakugan Dragonoid here in Vegas. Moving on to the quarterfinal round. Neil Elliott and Max D representing Team Ice up against his teammate Brianna Mahan in Whiplash, who had an incredible night last night winning the first ever best trick competition. They are both off the starting line, coming through Thunder Alley, down the chicane, hitting the brakes from Whiplash, and now for Max D as they round that final turn, and Max D with a big lead. So Team Ice represented very well as Neil Elliott moves on to round three. Our four round three matchups are set, and this is what we came to see. It is fire versus ice in every matchup, including on the top side of that right bracket, Ryan Anderson versus Adam Anderson, a rematch from last night. Pulling to the line now. Cody Saussier has been fast all night, and he is going to get faster. So Bari's got his hands full here. Uh, but Bari's in the lane that he likes. He likes the left lane. He continues to run over there. But Cody also had lane choice. He's running fast times. He's in the right, loves it. He's got the fast time coming into the corner and just nice and easy for Cody Saussier to the finish line. I think at this point he is locked in no matter what lane he picks. Another lightning fast time as Cody Saussier, Monster Energy moving on to the semifinal round. A great night so far for him. He will look to continue that next round, but up next it is John Zimmer in Dragon Ice, Charlie Pawkin in Grave Digger Fire. So Pawkin will try to even the odds in the semifinal round. These are two incredibly smart superstar driver athletes, and they're navigating a track they are very familiar with. But John Zimmer and Dragon Ice getting the edge in this round three matchup. And any time that you're running a sub-17 run, I mean, it's good enough to take the win as long as you're consistent. And Mr. Consistency himself, Ryan Anderson, he is just fast and is all going up against his brother. I mean, he knows that he's got the pressure, but like he talked yesterday, all they want to do is just have an Anderson move on. The first overall pick in the draft against the second overall pick, and Anderson gets backwards. Adam Anderson, that is, as Ryan Anderson and son of a digger taking advantage and another win over his brother in a rematch from last night. Same matchup, same result. And it's tough as a driver because if you don't get lane choice, you don't get to pick the lane that you want. And it's interesting for most of the fans that know, okay, they, they raced once before, which was in the first round. So Neil had the chance to come back because Lindsey Reed couldn't make it because she blew a motor. Um, so he's got a second chance at Camden Murphy. It's hard enough to beat Neil Elliott Max D once in a night. Now Camden Murphy trying to do it twice and get one for Team Fire. Neil Elliott again with some issues on that turn. And Camden Murphy in Bakugan Dragonoid avoids the clean sweep for Team Ice in this round. So he gets one back. And now we will move on to the semifinals of this Vegas style racing. It was three to one that round in favor of Team Ice, Monster Energy Dragon Ice, Son of a Digger representing their team, and Bakugan Dragonoid, the lone remaining member of Team Fire in the semifinals. Up next, can Son of a Digger repeat as champion, or will the Vegas redemption of Camden Murphy continue? Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. We started with 24, and now we are down to the fastest four Monster Jam trucks in this Vegas-style racing Saturday night. It's a beautiful evening in Las Vegas at Sam Boyd, and now we look to crown another racing winner. Last night, Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger led the Team Ice domination. Tonight, it's 3-1 to one. Team Ice versus Team Fire in the semifinals. We know that Team Ice is going to walk away with something. If Camden Murphy can't make it for Team Team Fire, he's the only one that has a hope for Team Fire right now, but these two guys right here, note that Cody has thrown John in the other lane. Cody gets lane choice faster time in the last round, and he is blistering a pass right now. And Team Fire looked to be the team that was built for racing, but the last two nights have been seven to one Team Ice in the semifinals, and Cody Saussier continues it. What an amazing night for him. He has continued to get faster and faster, and is just flat out dominating this Vegas style track. Look at Jeff Sin there, he's happy, that's Cody's mechanic. Uh, that's the biggest thing as a driver, you wanna make sure that you have that team chemistry. Um, and these two guys have it too, John Fitchett, David Stansel, they've got the trucks ready to go, so that way they can go 70 miles an hour here in Las Vegas. Ryan Anderson, 18 and six on this track coming into tonight. And he starts having a little problems getting wide 
Kim Bakugan take advantage of it. This is going to be close at the finish. And Camden Murphy, Bakugan Dragonoid, continuing his run. He will move on to the final round. And Morgan, we will get a Fire versus Ice final matchup. And this is going to be a good one because these guys have the same style of racing. Wide open, trying to be smooth as you can possibly be. But it'll be interesting who's in which lane. Cody looks like he's he was faster, so he's going to stay in the right lane. And lane choice is key here in Las Vegas because if you're comfortable in a lane, there's nothing worse than a driver throwing you in a lane that you don't like. We mentioned coming into tonight, it was a 24-point lead for Team Ice. 24 and 23 are the points that are on the line. The winner, of course, getting 24. I know it's only a one-point difference, but at this point, every single point is critical and crucial. And here they go off the starting line through Thunder Alley and down the chicane, and they are dead even in the J-hook. It is Monster Energy and Bakukan Dragonoid. Whoa, and by an edge, one. it looks like Cody Saucier and Monster Energy gonna get the win. That is two for two in racing for Team Ice. And that's well deserved from Cody Saucier and Monster Energy. I know he is pumped up right now. His dad's here. He's got his, his brother-in-law, which is Jeff Sin, his main mechanic. They're all psyched up right now because this is an important win for Team Ice. Head to head, both nights of racing. Team Ice takes it 20 to 13. Let's hear from our winner, Cody Saucier. So Cody, for the second time here on the prestigious Sam Boyd Stadium track, you take the victory, extending your record here to 19 and five as you pick up the big win here at the All-Star Challenge. You know what, Leslie? I am damn proud of that record. I'm damn proud to represent Monster Energy. Literally, my brother-in-law right here in my right ear, turning the wrenches. We built this truck by ourselves, man. We've got our own tricks up our own sleeves with this beast right here. Tyler Duke, man, you're fast. I can't thank Monster Energy enough for giving me such an incredible opportunity since way back when, their first year involved in 2012. I was right there with them. You fans for voting us in number five, Team Ice, man. We're carrying momentum, bring it on freestyle. Cody Saucier, Monster Energy was taken in the third round by Scott Buto and Team Ice, and now the point differential is 60. Almost seems insurmountable, but one competition remains, and Tom Mance and Max D. Fire has put together a great team. They're just not having much luck here in Las Vegas. Up next, the final competition. Can Team Ice sweep? It's freestyle next. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by Great Clips. Great clips, it's gonna be great. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by Spin Master Toys. Real trucks, real action, Monster Jam. We are back with night number two of the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge. Saturday night has been a beautiful night for racing, but it's an even more beautiful night for freestyle as Team Ice has been dominant through three competitions and a 60-point lead. The two-day event has taken its toll on the trucks. This is the original Super Glue Corporation Pit Report. There is so much action back here in the pits, and it's taking all hands on deck to make sure that we can get everybody back in action. I mean, we're talking about steering pumps, solenoid, trade transmissions here with Gravedigger and Monster Energy. And then the biggest story of the night so far, Scooby-Doo with a blown engine in that round of racing. And so it's all hands on deck to get that engine swapped out so she can make it back for freestyle. Mari Musauer, Zombie Fire are going to get us started for Monster Jam Freestyle. Two minutes on the clock for him. And Morgan, I was at lunch today with the entire, almost the entire section of Team Fire when Barry Musauer told Team Captain Tom Metz, hey, I want to go first. I want to kick this thing off. And that's exactly what happened. Well, it's nice because, I mean, once you go towards the end of the packet, you have so much pressure on you. And Barry, Barry likes to just go out and start the show off strong and make sure that he, that pressure is on everyone else later in the field. And he decided just to take out the stars. They didn't do anything to you, Barry. You took them all out. And here he goes now trying to find something to do. This track is massive, and there are so many obstacles for drivers to take advantage of. So we'll see how Bari Musauer sets the tone. And more stars now going out. 
courtesy of zombie fire. It's actually a strategy as a driver. You want to make sure that the, if there are any crushables out there, you go ahead and knock those out so nobody else can hit them. Uh, and Bari has a good strategy there. Go ahead and get set all the balloons free. Well, he might have something up his sleeve as far as a container backflip goes, but there's some nice air for zombie fire. So Bari Musauer now will set the tone, and he is going to, I thought he was going to accelerate a little bit there and hit that backflip. He hit the brakes, turned around, and will come at it again. Now another nice jump for Bari Musauer, landing it perfectly, and this is all about filling the clock and getting those, as you said, the crushables out of the way. As a driver, you always want to have a plan, and to keep that momentum up, it's really Really crucial because you have to make sure that it flows good. Bari looks like he's lining up and getting the fans on their feet. This is a triple now, so the biggest thing is, is that the triple hasn't been in play for years. And every driver wanted to hit it. Bari's going to be the first one for it. Man, he skies it over the buses on the triple, down on the nose, and he's going to try to save this, Holy and he does cow. it. What an amazing save for Bari Musauer, hitting the triple, bouncing it around, and ending up on the tires and continuing this freestyle run. I think what's so amazing is that the truck's still in one piece, you know? A hard hit like that, it looks like you might have a rear steer issue, which could just be self-centering or a ram or something like that, which he can still go. And he is lining up for a donut right now, which is a great, smart move to finish out the run because you know your truck's broke. You don't want to go off axis and get crazy. Ending with a solid donut. Great move, Ari. Now this is what fans like to see. They don't get an opportunity to see donuts in stadiums very often. So Bari Musauer doing exactly what he needed to do to fill the remainder of that clock. And that is how you start a freestyle run. And that, sir, is why you are an all-star. And I know Team Fire up here on the roof, they're stoked right now because Bari set it on fire with the first run, gaining some points back for Team Fire. So 7.975, that sets the tone. We talked about how going early sometimes is an advantage, but I still think that score might be a little low for what he did in that run. Yeah, really the only thing that he didn't have was a backflip, but Team Fire loves it. Diesel Dave doing a little bit of a zombie arm, getting the fans on their feet. Up next, John Gordon, Bad Company. This is his forte. He loves freestyle. He's been looking forward to this all weekend, and he's got a lot of family here. The owner of the truck is here. They're out here to try and get on top. And you saw them setting the bar here with freestyle with zombie fire. So John Gordon, Bad Company now representing Team Ice with a nice jump early on. Our team captains not only selected the racing bracket, they selected the order of freestyle. So it's going to be fire, ice, fire, ice, all the way through the 24 trucks. But there is a, a method to the madness and a reason why these trucks are picked here. And he almost lost it. Yeah, he's definitely one that likes to have a lot of momentum. But you got to watch it because when you're swinging it into the corners, some of the dirt piles up. And it might bite you to roll you over, but John will pick up and he will find his groove. He'll get some big air and just make sure that he fills his time. That's the biggest thing as a driver you want to do going early is you got to set the bar for the fans so they can go on judgesoak.com and give you a good score. And speaking of scoring, 9.210 was his score from Kansas City. We broadcast that on NBCS and it was the best freestyle run I have ever seen from John Gordon and Bad Company. And he is the 2019 Monster Jam Wow Factor Award winner. So he can go out there and just tear the track up and tear the truck up. And you mentioned a lot on the line, a lot of motivation for him here tonight in Vegas. Yeah, he has a lot of pressure on him always, but going for the backflip, if you notice the container shifted a little bit. That was a little something that you don't ever see as a driver, really, because when you hit the container, it's pretty solid. But he made it around. He's gaining his momentum. The roof is off. Tops out, ride. And again, the poor star is just ending up on the ground in front of the containers. He tries to get up a little sky wheelie action, and he is going to save it. So John Gordon averts disaster, and now that is going to be an end to his run as we watch Scott Buto, Cam McQueen, Ryan Anderson, and Neil Elliott all watching a great run from John Gordon, 7.144 for Team Ice. So now we've had one from each team go as we continue with the 24 All-Stars here in Las Vegas. I thought that was a solid run from John Gordon, definitely. But And Team Ice is excited because they know they're in the lead and all they have to do is stay consistent. But you got coming up next so many heavy hitters, especially for Team Fire. They're ready to get some points back. A lot of new Fire and Ice bodies making their debut in Las Vegas, including Grave Digger Fire and Grave Digger Ice. This is the America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses Look-In. Who's ready for America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses Look-In? 
Hey everybody, I'm Jim McShay. I'm the painter of the Monster Truck Grave Digger. I've been painting now for the last 20 years. These two trucks here, the Fire and Ice Grave Diggers, compared to the original Grave Digger, it, it was a challenge. Neil and Jay, they gave me paintwork for the Fire and Ice Grave Digger. I had the drawing and I had to come out here and lay it all out and figure out where to start and finish. I had to break my routine or out of my realm, as you want to call it where when I do these trucks here, I could do them in my sleep. I've been doing flames for years and so forth, so I was accustomed to that, but when it came to the ice grave digger truck, uh, really I liked that one better. It was a little challenge to do the tombstone, so to speak, with the, with the snow and the frozen snow melting and so forth. It was, right. like, it was like doing the first grave digger, if, you know what I mean, if you understand that. Yeah. The legendary Jim McShay. Speaking of legends, we've had a celebrity guest judge, Dennis Anderson. Grave Digger is here in the house. Oh, my baby. Bad to the bone. We know the fans score this at judgeszone.com. Dennis is here to try to guide them and, and give his scores as well. And he's watching his daughter, Kristen Anderson, Grave Digger Ice Boy. You have a daughter. I've got three of them. I'm not sure I could be in that position where I'd have to score my daughter's freestyle run. Well, for me to be able to experience this, I mean, I've been looking forward to this all summer, to watch Kristen in a stadium. I mean, she's like a sister to me. And it's, it's so cool to be able to see the success that she's starting to have because she's getting comfortable in the truck. She has a lot of pressure from the fans uh, on social media, you know, and because technology now, you have that first-hand access to the drivers. Um, and she, she loves the support, but she also is, is trying to make a name for herself. And, and here at the All-Star Challenge, she has that chance. All right, Dennis up there judging, watching his daughter run. Let's see how Dennis is feeling about Kristen Anderson. Save, so Papa is impressed. The crowd here is impressed. That's how you do it. As we watch her brother Ryan Anderson and some of the members of Team Ice get her back up on that save. That's how you do it for him. And nine freestyle wins on the season for Kristen Anderson. Most of them coming in arenas. All of them, in fact, coming in arenas. But what a great debut performance for her in freestyle for Las Vegas. Well, I know that's not exactly what she wanted. She wanted to go a little bit longer, um, which the score reflects from that. You know, scoring third, judgeszone.com, they're looking for a full run. And unfortunately, Kristen just hits a right on that knuckle. Crazy save but not enough to complete her run. Now, we have seen before, sometimes, Morgan, all it takes is one save to win you a world championship, and we know that can happen any given night in Monster Jam Freestyle. Now we move on to Bryce Kenny in Great Clips Mohawk Warrior Fire and talk a little bit about Spin Master and the great toys they put out when they released the fire and ice trucks. A lot of fans on social media were wondering if we'd see Great Clips Mohawk Warrior rebranded, and I love the fire body. Yeah, it's a great body but I mean it is just a body you know the biggest thing that we look for in a driver and a crew chief is that they're gonna have that chemistry um, Bryce has been working with Scott Phillips and they're they're working together to try and get the truck to land a little bit better it's been really on the soft side and, and I've been trying to help Bryce out by like okay jump land your front tires first um, because it helps the truck land a little bit better so he's been excited to get out there and really put it on the edge for these fans here at the All-Star Challenge because he does have this new body and he has something out here to prove. Bryce Kenny, the 16th overall selection for Team Fire. He was a captain's pick, and that is why he is here. Uh, you fans voted 10 superstars at MonsterJam.com. The captains took care of the rest. Six competing trucks all season long, and a nice jump for Great Clips Mohawk Warrior Fire, and he saves it on two wheels. So a bicycle on top of the ramp, and now Bryce Kenny going around over by Thunder Alley, coming back to the other side of the track. There is a nice step up ramp he clears it on the jump so Bryce trying to put together something for two minutes you got to be spectacular he talks about living on the ragged edge driving on the ragged edge and you think that's what he's doing right now well he's definitely trying to clear that air and get it way out there because you want to try and have a little bit of room for your settle and uh, not quite man that's unlucky just a, a, a bad landing a bad bounce and unlucky on the locker in the front because it didn't drive it all the way up normally if the locker doesn't unlock, you can drive out of that. 
5.415 the score for Bryce Kenny. Greg Clips Mohawk Warrior third place now for Team Fire occupying that spot. We have many more Monster Jam superstar athletes still to come all looking for that wow moment and speaking of someone who can deliver Tyler Menega in Grave Digger representing Team Fire. He comes out on the track the Triple Threat Series West Champion in 2019 got him an automatic bid to Monster Jam World Finals. I talked earlier about how he's won more races than anybody in the field. He's got 48 freestyle wins more than anybody here tonight. Well, Tyler was up here on the roof before he went out for freestyle, and he wanted to have a little bit of advice, and, and I wanted to give it to him because he has had bad luck in the stadium freestyle setting because he is so used to the 60 seconds in the triple threat. He goes wide open as fast as he can go from the start, and in a stadium, you really can't do that because it's a long freestyle you have two minutes to impress these fans and you just got to make sure that you fill your time or even get close to filling your time and he's got a great run going right now he's nice and smooth he's already started with some big air fans are standing on their feet they're happy and they're as happy because it's a great digger out there he has been a champion on the triple threat series the last three years and now what a way to cap off a Vegas weekend by giving one back to Team Fire. It would be an awesome accomplishment for Tyler Menega and Grave Digger. Now you got to wonder where's that big moment going to come from for him. Morgan, you talked about planning things out and seeing the whole track and trying to figure out where you're going to pick and choose your spots. Tyler Menega, what can he do now to get on top of the leaderboard? Well, really, I mean, he's got great momentum, and I think that he can he could get a little bit more big air, which I think he's probably going for, and just throw a backflip in there. But at 45 seconds, Parker Hatcher normally comes in and tells me, hey, go for the backflip, and that's exactly what Tyler's doing right now. Nice and easy. Well done. Quick and easy. Right back to it get a lot of momentum and hit some big air. And by this point in your run, you're gonna start going crazy. Here's a one bounce landing, so the backflip now off the board for Tyler Menega. And he's got Woo! some big air as he skies it high above Sam Boyd Stadium. A slap wheelie on the landing and still a little more room to run for Grave Digger representing Team Fire. He will back it up and here comes the triple. We've seen it attempted by Zombie Fire for Grave Digger. Tyler Menega gets it in over and lands it, slaps it down, and he is still going. I guess that's the only way that you can take the triple, because Barry did the same exact thing. Tyler with another backflip. Nice run, man. This has been a great run. A lot of wow moments. Big air, big momentum. We need a crazy finish now. Let's see. Uh, getting crazy into the face of that jump. It's unfortunate, but it was exactly the time that he needed because the fans are screaming right now, all on their phones, judgeszone.com. Team Fire is pumped, ready to gain some more points back on Team Ice. Now, I don't think Barton Musa reminds now that your new leader is Tyler Menega in Gravedigger Team Fire in that first spot. What an amazing jump. He hits the triple, slaps it down, follows it up with a container backflip. Two back flips, a triple jump save. Tyler Menega, your new leader. Zombie Fire, Bad Company, Grave Digger Ice, and Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior Fire are your top five. Where do we go from here? A dynamic run from Tyler Menega and Grave Digger. More Monster Jam Freestyle on the way from Vegas. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses. It's not just a better deal, it's America's Best. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Scott Jordan, Morgan Kane, Leslie Mears calling the action for you. Freestyle is underway. Last night was a great night with the first ever Best Trick Competition. After winning the Best Trick Competition last night, Brianna Mahan told me she's got a whole new perspective on how she's going to approach freestyle. So normally she's a planner, and that's what she did just one night ago before she won, and things didn't go as planned, and she still came out on top. So she realizes now that, hey, she's just along for the ride to react to that truck, and so she's going to use that mentality tonight when she approaches freestyle. And we talked about this last night. She didn't come out and complete what she attempted, but she still made a completion nonetheless and won the competition. So it begs the question, do you drive the truck or does the truck drive you? Well, you want to make sure that you definitely fill the time. So, I mean, you're definitely driving the truck uh, a little bit harder than what you would normally do. But Brianna doesn't have much pressure on her because Team Ice is in the lead. All they have to do is fill the time and maybe have a spectacular uh, save or, or a backflip or something at the end of your run because 
because you're not the one that has anything to lose because you're in the lead and, and basically if you just stay nice and composed you can stay in the lead and she's one of the best reactionary drivers in monster jam she proved that at world finals in orlando back to back save she was able to get it back on all four tires and ended up on the podium so a career night for her in orlando a career night for her last night and she will try to take it up a step and up a notch and make it another career night in whiplash so she's got a lot of time left on the clock a lot of space to fill and we have mentioned that before how much room there is on this first track how do you develop your, your game plan and your scheme when there's so much to hit well that's the good thing about this track is here in las vegas they always pack everything in they're super tight you don't have a lot of settling room um, for a driver that's really hard because you want to go as big as you can um, because i mean the trucks are starting to take it we're, we're designing the suspension to soak everything up once you land but when you have jump after jump back to back to back it, it's hard to settle and even just gain your bearings a little bit um, so with this settle room you can jump towards the middle and have a nice uh, good flowing run Rihanna's headed towards the monster energy backflip ramp a lot of rotation a little too much but could she grab the front tires no didn't get the bounce to go her way on the roof of whiplash was still able to get a decent run in there. We'll see how the judges score her in this freestyle performance. Her team, Ice teammates, looking on. A nod of approval there from Cam McQueen, driver of Northern Nightmare. So 6.438 for Brianna Mahan. She gets into the top five and some nice jumps for her. Ended it with the backflip attempt. Just didn't get that final bounce to go her way and ended her run a little short, but still able to get some decent things in there. Team Ice, another truck now in the top five in Monster Jam Freestyle. We move on to Corey Rummel in Megalodon Fire, another dynamic athlete who helped put his team together at the All-Star Draft. I talked to Corey before this event, and he was excited about freestyle the most because he gets a lot of seat time in the summer, um, and he is one of the drivers that keeps a lot of momentum going throughout his run. He's solid behind the wheel, and he knows how to fill his time. Uh, on his tour, he was really competitive. Oh, nice cross thread. That's one way to hit that triple. He just kind of jumped it a little bit on the side, hitting the secondary ramp, and ends up getting all the way over the buses. Backing it up now by the container backflip ramps, and he will go at it again as Megalodon Fire accelerating with some nice oh. air. It just hits the ramp the wrong way. Can he save it? He still has a chance here, and he's going back again and just runs out of momentum. But it looked like he had a chance as he just barreled into that ramp off the sky jump. Still hits the triple, and here is the look at the landing. He just comes up short, but a nice save attempt for Corey Rummel and Megalodon Fire. That's a hard hit right there, but almost had the save. Our top five here. Tyler Meninga still in the lead with a great run. Huge momentum, backflip, crazy saves. That's what the fans want to see at JudgesZone.com. We got a lot more still to come, including multiple World Finals champions. It's all happening right here at Sam Boyd Stadium. We are back with more Monster Jam Freestyle at the first annual All-Star Challenge, night number two from Sam Boyd. And so far, the story of the night has been Tyler Menega and Grave Digger. His run for Team Fire has him atop of our BKT Freestyle Top 5, the two backflips, the successful landing on the triple jump. It was an amazing run, and we will see if it can stand the test of the remaining competitors now representing Team Ice, John Zimmer in Dragon Ice. He's going to start from the corner and accelerate. We got a ramp right in front of him and he kicks it off with some big air. And it's always good to start out with some big air. First hit out your freestyle because the Monster Jam shocks that we have on these trucks, they have a dampener on them and you want to make sure it's set right because that's going to set your tone for the entire run. If it lands good off the, off the bat, off of the big first jump, you're ready to go as big as you can for the rest of the round. John Zimmer was highly competitive on Stadium Championship Series 3 in 2019 with another jump, a little whip there at the top elevation. As I would say, Todd LaDuke won that series, but John Zimmer Dragon Ice was right there with him all the way up till the end. So it was a great 2019 for him, competed at Monster Jam World Finals in Orlando, and now capping it off with this performance for the winning team so far on the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge. One thing I'm noticing is that John's brakes are starting to get a little hot, and it's kind of odd because John normally doesn't ride brakes. Um, so 
It might be something going on with the truck. Um, I would think that after racing, you know, that's when your brakes get really hot. So freestyle, normally you don't see that, but John's still trucking along and doing what he's got to do, keeping his momentum up, so that way it's exciting for the fans. He's going for the Monster Energy backflip ramp. A little bit slower, good read. Nice and easy, well done. That's all you need, nice and easy, wins the race here, just like slow and steady. John Zimmer, none of those, he makes his money as a racer, that's where he's earned his status in Monster Jam, but he is tearing up the freestyle track, hitting every obstacle in front of him. So a little bit of time left as he goes for a container backflip, and he lands this one as well. So two backflips for John Zimmer in Dragon Ice. It looks like he's having a little bit of an issue here. Sometimes when you get into a rotation with a backflip, the tire speed is going so fast and you have to slam on the brakes. Well, sometimes if the motor's not tuned exactly right, the idle might not be high, it might shut the truck off. And I remember John was talking about that. He was having a little bit of issues every now and again, and this might still be his issue. Well, he is continuing to run the clock down in freestyle, and here comes a donut for Dragon Ice. This is what you do to get the crowd on their feet. Rotation after rotation, and John Zimmer's freestyle run has now come to an end, but back flips galore for Dragon Ice, and that's what you need to keep Team Ice going. Top three now for John Zimmer. Team Ice comes into the competition with a 60 point lead, trying to run away with this thing. That is the container backflip for Dragon Ice and the final donut concluding the run. Right now, let's go to the 2019 Monster Jam World Finals High Jump Champion. You know what, when I went to Orlando World Finals, I kind of went a little bit quiet. I was trying to fill my time. The score was not there. I did the backflip, filled my time, and it did not pay off. People did a 20 second run and had a huge score. So you know what, I'm just gonna go big each jump and just whatever happened, happened, but I'm not backing off. Strong words from Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice, and she sends it down, Thunderelli, and she is high above Sam Boyd Stadium. A spectacular landing. And she could have actually landed that perfectly, but the momentum carrying her over. But what a jump for Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice. That was by far the biggest air of the night. Possibly the biggest air this year. That was massive. Full on commitment from Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice. It was fun that though. That was dumb. Okay, as your father figured, that was dumb. Uh, it was fun. So Cam McQueen not mincing words. He tells her it was fun, but it was dumb. So I don't know how you, I don't know how you take that, but it doesn't matter whether it was fun or dumb. She is your current leader with one jump. We saw Randy Brown do that at World Finals. Cynthia Gautier taking that strategy, and now Charlie Pawkin in Grave Digger Fire coming off that ramp with a nice jump, a good way to start. He's got to follow one jump, Cynthia Gautier. Well, Charlie's really good about filling his time. He makes sure that he, he goes around and he does what he's got to do to make sure that he gets deep in the run and then he does something spectacular at the end. So Charlie Pawkins, seasoned Gravedigger driver and especially tonight for Gravedigger fire, he's ready to set it on fire. Going out, a couple big air jumps here at the beginning, just really testing the shocks out. And I love the way that this body looks. You know, we spoke with Jim earlier about the time it took to paint these Grave Digger bodies. It takes over 30 hours, and it takes five seconds for us to destroy it. So we definitely keep a little bit of job security on our side. Oh, Charlie, keep it on all fours, bud. Uh, unlucky, unlucky. Just had an unlucky oh, turn there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, in this stadium in 2010. What a short freestyle run for Charlie Pawkin in Grave Digger Fire, still managing to get into the top 10 with a 5.585. There's a look at that step up jump that he nails in Grave Digger Fire. You mentioned about Jim McShay. What a great job he did on the fire and ice bodies for Grave Digger and a look at the failed save attempt for Charlie Pawkin. Well, I can definitely speak on one, one thing that's not doing a good job, and that's the judgeszone.com. That was a little bit crazy on the scores right now. I mean, that was a one hit five second wonder and you take the lead over someone that does backflips and crazy saves I don't know about that but we got more freestyle coming up next if you were just joining us this is night number two of the monster jam all-star challenge it is monster jam freestyle and prior to a few minutes ago it was Tyler Menega and Grave Digger who filled the clock and just checked off a lot of boxes but Cynthia 
Gautier Monster Month Dalmatian Ice comes out with one spectacular jump, and she is your new leader for Team Ice. Here's Cole Vinard in the Black Pearl Monster Truck, another member of Team Ice. Well, it's so cool. Cole puts so much work and time into, into making sure that Black Pearl stays together, and, and he's got a great owner behind him, Jamie Garner, Overboard. They are a great team. They're running together and making sure that they keep the fans happy, but at the same time, they are competitive. You know, and Cole is one of those drivers that he always wants to win. But with Team Ice, he's he's on a team. So it's a team effort, and he knows that he just has to stay consistent through the run to put a good score in and lock it in for Team Ice. He became an all-star as a captain's choice. He was selected with the 11th overall pick at the all-star draft. And now Cole Vinar, the Black Pearl, going to cut his freestyle run slightly short. Well, it's definitely a shame because Cole had a lot planned for this run. Broken axle in the front. Possibly a spindle, maybe a champagne, but either way, puts him in 11th place for Team Ice. And I think that uh, Team Fire might be gaining a little bit on Team Ice, but they they pretty much locked it in. Yeah, Colvinard has to be disappointed with that run. He's got four freestyle wins in 2019. Not going to get the fifth, but Team Ice still in the lead with Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt, Dalmatian Ice. And now we move to one half of the Diesel Brothers. Heavy D in Bro Dozer, the first diesel power truck in Monster Jam history. Going to start off with a nice jump. And man, we're in watching this truck and listening to it run. It purrs like a kitten, but it is so powerful out there. It was so cool because before this event on Thursday, I had the chance to talk with Heavy D. And, and it's so cool on the passion that these guys have for the diesel industry. They are so excited that Monster Jam has brought Bro Dozer on board. And they're excited to make sure that it stays for the future and this weekend it's been kind of a disappointment because they've had a couple breaks here and there but i know that heavy d wants to get out here the diesel dave is back here for team ice cheering him on they're super excited heavy d's got a lot to prove here in freestyle yeah 2019 is a big year for bro dozer and the diesel brothers just announced bro camino with diesel dave behind the wheel will compete in 2020 against you morgan on stadium championship series green it's always cool to have new competitors come on and heavy d and diesel dave are going to be one heck of a team but tonight the team aspect is definitely oh, yeah. trying to pay off there you go. Heavy D knows he has to take risks Good for team fire play, to be able to gain yeah. more yeah. points yeah. Boy, and nice it's risk-taking indeed. You got a three-headed monster with Team Bro Dozer, whether it's Heavy D behind the wheel, Diesel Dave, or Colt Stevens. They can all beat you in racing and freestyle. So Heavy D slowing down slightly, but he's coming back now to our side of the track, the near side. And here is the container backflip for Bro Dozer. Skies it straight up and just falls short of sticking the landing. Man, that's so tough because as Heavy D approaches the backflip ramp, he has to make sure that that turbo is at full spool to get all the tire speed. And it's been something that's been tricky for all of them, really, uh, for that, the whole season. So really trying to hone it in. It looked like the container also gave way, but great momentum run. It was able to have some big air, good enough for fifth place and given a couple points for Team Fire. I think that's a great spot for a Heavy D. He got here with the fan voting at MonsterJam.com. And now we move on to the team captain for Team Ice, El Capitan Scott Buto. In El Toro Loco Ice, he selected this spot specifically for himself earlier at the pit party. So you got to figure what is in store for the captain of Team Ice. Well, he knows going in the middle of the pack is always good. But oh, man, what a bad break right there. That is unfortunate for Scott Buteau. He's able to keep it on all fours, but that tire is ripped in half. Came off of that jump and caught the edge of the container. And it's that's like an unfortunate act right there. But it was a spectacular wreck. Uh, good enough for ninth place. I know Scott's really disappointed on this one. I know he's shaking his head inside that cab. And you got to give credit where credit is due, though, for him to even save that. It looked like he was just going to go onto the roof of El Toro Loco Ice, but he manages to save it, and he is now in the top 10. Your BKT leaderboard is up. Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice remains the leader. More home run hitters still to come, including our reigning World Finals Freestyle Champion. It has been a spectacular weekend here in Las Vegas. The Monster Jam Pit Party took center stage earlier this afternoon. The best in motorsports, and we're going to show you why with Inside Monster Jam. Smiling big. It is monster. If you've never experienced a pit party before, you've got to come check it out. You get to come be up close and personal with these huge beasts. 
You get to meet all the drivers, get autographs, take pictures. It's a really great time. Fans are awesome. They are the number one awesome thing in my life is Monster Jam fans. Number one. High five. Uh, Pin Party gets you ready for the show because these people build your excitement. They pump your adrenaline. They give you ideas of what they want to see. And you know if they're excited, I'm going to be excited. I'm ready to rock and roll. That's how it works. We feed off the audience. They feed us adrenaline and we rock it out. That's how it works. It is so cool when I see little girls come through the line. I know they look up and they want to do something like this when they grow up. So if I can push them to go and pave the way for other girls when they get older, then that's what I'm trying to do out here. Monster Jam always breaking down the barrier between the superstars and the fans. Your BKT Freestyle Top 5 Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice at 8.773 from that insane jump by Cynthia Gautier. Still out in front. So you have Ice and then Fire 1 and 2 with Grave Diggers Tyler Menega in second. Here is Jim Kohler and Avenger. He's going to do it too. All the way over Mr. Excitement. And that is now the second and third wheel. He has just broken off of Avenger. Man, that's an unfortunate break, but I mean, he saw it before. He's, he is the king of air. And we're pushing these trucks to the limit. And uh, that's an unfortunate break for Jim Kohler, but I mean, it is what it is. And, and that's the decision that he made. Jim Kohler has won two Monster Jam World Finals Freestyle Championships in this stadium. And look at the score. He is now in third place. So you have Cynthia Gautier in first with one jump. Then Tyler Menega with a full run and Grave Digger in second. And now Jim Kohler and Avenger with one jump gets you into third place. Now two of the top three have made one move. And that's maybe what the fans are looking for tonight. Here's our racing winner from earlier tonight, Cody Saucier in Monster Energy looking to double down in freestyle. Cody's definitely someone that you can count on to make sure that he gets a lot of momentum and fills some, a lot of time on his run. Uh, he's really nice and smooth and consistent as you saw in racing. And if you heard right there, he downshifts to first and then hits second. He is one of the only drivers that does that. And he normally gets two or three of them in during the freestyle. Um, but as far as Cody being a representative for Monster Jam and Monster Energy, it's great. Now he's going to cross thread. The triple doesn't quite reach the entire end of that bus, but still spectacular nonetheless. Fans voted for Cody Saucier and Monster Energy at MonsterJam.com into this competition, and he was selected with the fifth overall pick by Scott Buto. Now you can tell exactly how revered he is going that early in the draft. Cody Saucier and Monster Energy now up on the big freestyle ramp, jumps right off the side of it, trying to make something happen. You talk about the luck in Vegas, sometimes it's not what you plan to do, it's how you react to something unplanned. Now up over the step up jump, over that freestyle backflip ramp, and he is now slapping it down on the back two tires. Cody Saucier and Monster Energy turning it around on the arc side, now coming back this way. Here we go down that long straightaway back on the ramp. Some Nice hair from Monster Energy. We well, have everyone up here on Team Ice, and they're just cheering Cody along because they know they've got a big lead. And as long as they stay consistent and just nice and smooth, fill your time, you'll get a good score from JudgesZone.com, hopefully. And with Cody with a step up, landed perfect right on top. And as he comes around, maybe he'll put a backflip into this run. He gets a little sideways, saves it. Now he's got room to go back again. He likes going sideways off the ramps. A lot of cross-threading in this run. That's how you make those wow moments happen. As his crew chief talking to him. And there's the backflip for Cody Saucier and the excitement from the brother-in-law and crew chief. Right there, a nice move for Monster Energy. So Cody Saucier with a real chance here and a good score for Team Ice. Definitely, this has been a great run. Good momentum, wow factors. He's hiked up on two wheels every now and again, but he's calm and collected and makes it happen. Where is he lining up for now? All right, 
little cross thread. It's got a little bit of a smoke coming from it, but I guess you can kind of expect that because when you fill your time for the Monster Jam Freestyle, these trucks are burning up hot. Cody Saussier continuing his great night now, elevating his status as a player in Monster Jam, sixth place overall for Team Ice. And one thing I just can't understand is like how a full run and a backflip, great air, good momentum, couple little saves, still ends up in sixth place. Uh, it's, it's a controversy that I'm not gonna let go because I mean, it's costing teams points. And this event is based off of teams and you gotta make sure that you're getting the most points for your team. Up next is the reigning Monster Jam World Finals Freestyle Champion and what a magical night she had back in Orlando. It was a Cinderella story and that's why she's here at the All-Star Challenge. And you talk about a Cinderella story, man. For the Monster Jam mechanics here, they're all up on the roof, they're cheering her on. It's crazy that she's even out here after that blown motor, but she's ready to prove a point and let everyone know that she is the freestyle world champion. You and I talked about this privately as Lindsay Reed now accelerating up the freestyle ramp, but uh, she was Miss Irrelevant in this all-star draft. She was picked dead last at 18th overall, so I, I don't think there's any other sport where a world champion gets picked last, but if you're a new fan coming to Monster Jam and you're voting for the winner of this competition, you might not know who Lindsay Reed is, but you know who Scooby-Doo is, and I feel like that is a huge factor. I don't think she should have been picked last, and I think she has something to prove tonight because of that. Well, I, I mean, the way that it's going tonight and this past weekend I mean from judgeszone.com I don't really think if it, if it matters you know because it's like if you do one hit or have a full freestyle they're going to screw you the way that they want and really it might all start at the pit party you know what do you say to fans and, and how do you get in their head before the show to make them like you but she's got a heck of a run going that was, that was a sweet backflip she wins freestyle. She has 11 freestyle wins on the year. Most of them in arenas. The big one was at World Finals. And that backflip shows you what she can do in this Scooby-Doo Monster Jam truck. So Lindsey Reed with a statement run right now representing Team Fire. All weekend it has been a battle with Team Fire versus Team Ice. And Team Ice has been nothing short of dominant. So right now Lindsey Reed trying to get the win back. Trying to get back on top for Team Fire. Take it away from Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice. Everybody up here from Team Fire is super excited to see this run come all together because, I mean, it, it could be valuable points for her if JudgesZone.com is ready for it. Um, so all the fans got their phones out, might hit the Monster Energy backflip ramp. Let's see how she can get around. Oh, a little reverse. Nice job. Smooth and collected. And continuing on with her freestyle. That's a great scooby backing it up for some more room here. She's going to go back around to the center section of the track. Now some nice jumps, two backflips all ready for her in this run. Dare she try a third one, but it looks like she is having some issues again in that Scooby-Doo Monster Jam truck. Those have plagued her tonight. Her run is over, but I think she came out and did what she needed to do and made that statement saying, I am better than the 18th overall pick. I am a world champion, and now I'm in fourth place. And she's definitely got the points on the board with that sweet backflip, great wow factors. And definitely one thing that you know you have on your side is that chemistry from the team that put this motor in this truck for her to be out here to compete. So Josh Woodard is the crew chief for Lindsey Reed, Scooby-Doo. Josh, you and your team behind you here pulled off a feat never accomplished in Monster Jam history before, swapping out that engine for Gracie to get her back for freestyle. What was the atmosphere back there and how hard were you guys working? Oh, it's always crazy, it does, but when you got a great crew and you work great with each other, anything's possible and you guys just seen that. Well, these guys are humble out here, the hardest working guys in the business right here, making it happen for Lindsey Reed and Scooby-Doo tonight. BKT Freestyle top five, four out of five belonging to Team Fire. They needed to get some points back, and they have done that thus far, but your leader remains Cynthia Gautier in Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice. Still more Monster Jam Freestyle to come. We are not done yet from Las Vegas. This is Monster Jam! A couple of our great young fans here in Las Vegas watching the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge. Again, with the BKT Freestyle Top 5, your leader remaining, Cynthia Gautier, with that insane jump right out of Thunder Alley, 8.773.
It is rare to see a leaderboard without a score in the nines, but the fans so far have been a little tough on some of these freestyle veterans and some of our new up-and-coming drivers that are also great in freestyle. Well, these judges have been rough and tough. I mean, it's it's ridiculous that still that one jump is still in the lead. So hopefully Colt Neichelberger with his momentum from triple threat, uh, can he can bring it out here and put some points on the board for Team Fire. Starting off good and some big air for Colton. I know that he's been excited to drive in a stadium because he has more room. He has more speed to be able to carry into these jumps and, and kind of get out of his comfort zone a little bit. He's had some chances to, to go overseas and compete in some big stadiums, and it's, and it's been great to watch him because he's a great driver. Yeah, he's competed in every type of track in 2019, arenas, speedways, rodeos, and stadiums. All combined, he's amassed 12 freestyle wins, so he can win pretty much anywhere on any track, and he's got some big shoes to fill with his dad, the captain of Team Fire, Tom Mentz, and this was a very important pick for him in the All-Star Draft when Scott Buto, Swipe, Neil Elliott, Tom Mentz was sure to grab his son, Colton Heichelberger, so he had a family member and a teammate on Team Fire. Yeah, with that family member and the place that he lives, I mean, it's great because he has such a big advantage. I mean, he's got Monster Jam University in his backyard, and his dad is Tom Mintz. He gets all the tips and pointers that he needs to be able to become a legendary driver, um, and he's really proven himself tonight. Really putting it out there. Big air for Max D and Team Fire. Big air for Colton Eichelberger and Max D trying to get another one up in that top five for Team Fire. They've got four out of five, but the leader is where it's at, and that belongs to Team Ice, but another good jump, and landing it down the other side of that ramp for Colton Eichelberger and Max D. That is my favorite jump on the track. I want to make sure that these guys are carrying so much momentum into the step up, and when they hit it, it's so cool because it, it's an illusion that they get so high in the air. Nice easy backflip from Colton. Nice job. Reverse, right back, first and second gear. Where's he going with this one? He's gonna go back to the step up again. Let's see what he's got. And you said oh. nice, nice, easy back. So you guys make this look so easy, but look at that, the eight pack up on top and he gets it, he lands it. So that's how you follow one backflip to another one. That was an incredible way to end freestyle for Colton Eichelberger and Max D as Team Fire looking on and applauding their teammate. Well, it's an unfortunate break for Colton. He bit a four-link bar when he landed on the, off the eight-pack backflip and unfortunately, you can't continue to run. I love the location of that ramp now being on the backflip being on top of the ramp as opposed to what we're normally seeing on stadium. So it's a nice added element to the uh, freestyle track here. A lot of work went into this. So shout out to everybody that took part in designing and creating this track. Colin Eichelberger in Max D with a great run. Here's Cam McQueen. You know, in my last couple years, I hadn't done a whole lot of stadiums. So was getting used to the tighter courses and that. Now we're going wide open. Basically every corner, you're, you're flat tracking it. You're drifting the truck, and it's a blast. It's a lot of fun to drive. Your 2012 Monster Jam World Finals Freestyle Champion, Cam McQueen in Northern Nightmare, coming off the side, get a bicycle save, and he continues plowing through this freestyle track. Here's a guy, Morgan, that didn't compete in Monster Jam a whole lot in 2019, but he's still so popular the fans voted him into this competition. Well, Cam is definitely a natural competitor. He's He's grown up through motorsports, and everything that he does, he's good at. And, I mean, you can see he's, he's going around, he's comfortable in the truck, and, and it's cool because he hasn't been in a truck since Calgary, which was this season, and uh, the last stadium show that he did was in 2018 at the World Finals. But lining up for something different, Cam McQueen, oh! Man, I feel like if he would have been in the throttle when he landed, it would have pulled it out. That was a cool move. And trying to clutch through off that container ram and almost landed it, like you said. Still a nice run for Cam McQueen, a guy genuinely excited to be here. If he's not in the truck, he is literally watching all of his teammates and cheering them on. So the Northern Nightmare, voted here by you, the fans at MonsterJam.com, ends with that corkscrew attempt off the container backflip ramp. So a decent run for Cam McQueen, though 13th overall. And now we move on to Team Fire. Camden Murphy in Baku gone dragging away earlier tonight. Possibly able to get the monkey off of his back by making it to the racing finals. And he talks about his luck here, but he did win here in March. He won the Great Clips Tubo Skills Challenge, which is not in this competition, but he did it, he did win something earlier when we came in March. Yeah, he's a really skilled driver and, and 
he is almost his worst enemy because when he thinks more about the places that he's at, he kind of, I guess, puts more pressure on himself. And when he doesn't put the pressure on himself, he is out to win. It's so crazy. I had the chance to be on tour with him, and the guy is just fast. He's good at what he does. He's good behind the wheel and keeps that momentum up all the time. And, and I mean, it helps because he gets a lot of seat time from NASCAR in the summer. So he's, he's getting that pressure. He's getting that speed, the adrenaline that you get from a monster jam truck. And uh, he puts on a great show. Hopefully gets some more points for here for Team Fire. 2019 Monster Jam Rising Star Award winner, really cutting his teeth in racing, but two big stages freestyle wins this year already trying for number three and he just continues to save this truck and keep it up it looks like he's getting a, a lined up for the monster energy backflip ramp and here we go with Baku Khan Dragonoid a great view inside the cab doesn't land it maybe just didn't get the throttle fully accelerated so Camden Murphy's run coming to an end for team fire I think the monster energy backflip ramp just kind of it grabbed the bumper and flipped him over but it's good enough to at least put some points on the board for team fire 13th is not where he wants to be um, but it is what it is we're moving on to the next competitor but he does bump northern nightmare out of that 13 spot every point is crucial so that's another point going for team fire your bkt freestyle top five your leader remains cynthia gautier and monster mutt dalmatian ice but the captain is on deck and ready to roll monster jam freestyle continues next Back in August, we held the Monster Jam All-Star Draft. Let's take you back to see how the teams were put together. This is Inside Monster Jam. So the draft process is something we've never seen. So who do you feel like was your big steal of the draft? You know, the one that shocked us the most, we, we picked Ryan Anderson first. So we were like, there's no way Tom will pass up a Neil Elliott. An accident destruction driver, right? So we're like, okay, he'll take Neil because we already knew he would do that, and we'll take Adam. He took, he took Adam. That surprised us, and we're, we were shocked. If you saw the video of it, we were absolutely shocked when, we, when Neil found our lap. So we grabbed Neil right away, and we couldn't believe we had him. So, Tom, why did you let Neil go, a driver who crewed for you, who you trained yourself? Well, you look at it this way. They had a huge advantage right out of the gate. They had two of the top three picks. Think about that. That was tough for us. So, you know, they took Ryan, and we thought right away, we need to split up the family. <laughs> we'll take Adam. You know, we were hoping they wouldn't take Neil, but they got him from us. You know, fortunately we got Colton, so we got to keep my true family together. We lost part of the Max D family. But, you know, if you're going to bet against Adam Anderson in Las Vegas, you got your work cut out for you. The guy's been amazing here. He's won a lot of championships here. And, you know, I was surprised they didn't take Adam out of the game. Ryan will always give you that moment of the month. He will. He'll be the top guy you see, his move for the month. Week in and weekend out, Adam Anderson's your man. Your BKT Freestyle top five remains with four of the top five as members of Team Fire. This is their last chance to pick up those points as Team Ice has dominated the first three competitions of this historic weekend. Back at Sam Boyd Stadium, your leader remaining Cynthia Gautier in Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice. But here is Neil Elliott in Max D representing Team Ice and he is off to a start on the ramp. Some nice air from Max D. Neil Elliott has never won a world championship, but watching him drive, you would never believe that. Yeah, you definitely can't bring the championships to the table with Neil Elliott, but he definitely puts a great freestyle run together. I mean, it's so exciting to watch him, and he's performing for Team Ice, so, I mean, the way that Neil normally drives, he's going to get some solid points for Team Ice. Big air cross-threading the triple and bringing it down nice and solid. That's one thing that you can say. Neil Elliott is a solid competitor, and you know that he put a good score on for freestyle. And here he comes again off the side part of that triple, just getting another great save for Neil Elliott. So off one ramp, bounces off another, and saves it, and then right back to the big air for Neil Elliott and Max D. I mentioned for the top five on our BKT leaderboard belong to Team Fire, so you gotta think Neil Elliott wants to push somebody out of there and grab some extra points to continue this dominant performance for Team Ice. Well, he's heading for the Monster Energy backflip ramp right now because this is the only thing that he doesn't have. Oh, he faked me out, but 
that is one thing that he needs in this run. He's got big air, he's got great momentum, he's had a save, at a backflip in, and this is a very competitive run for first place. The fans voted Neil Elliott into this competition in MonsterJam.com, one of the 10 superstar athletes voted by you, the fans. So here he comes, he's trying to get over the buses. Looks like that tire has gone flat, and it has. So he's on three wheels right now, and we'll see how far Neil Elliott can make it on three BKT tires. Another jump, and another flat for Max D. Man, that ruins the chance for a backflip for Neil Elliott and Max D with two flat tires. It was a spectacular run. The fans are pumped and happy. They got their phones out, putting the scores in. He may not need the backflip, and he doesn't. He is going to jump up into the top five, knocking a member of Team Fire out. 8.333 for Neil Elliott and Max D. That save, incredible. The two flat tires may have been something the fans wanted to see. We've seen the, the crazy jumps from Avenger and Cynthia Gautier. Now Neil Elliott into the top five. And here is the team captain, the 12-time World Finals champion, Tom Menz and Max D, starting with the center ramp. The clock is now ticking two minutes for the team captain. Tonight has not gone Tom's way. I know he got knocked out early in racing um, and really he, he knows that he has to kind of put his self aside and say, yep, this is a team competition. This is for team fire and we have to gain valuable points back. So I'm hoping that Tom can put some good solid runs on the board and bring some points back for team fire. Got to be very disappointed with his run yesterday in the best trick competition. He nailed the maximum moonwalk, did not get a score that, that seemed to be worthy of that trick, but that was yesterday. This is now, and there's the triple hitting that third bus and landing it nicely, just missing, clearing the final bus for Max D. So Tom Metz tried to make the triple. Looks like that's going to do it for his run. Talk about what you saw on that jump. So on the jump, it looked good to me. It looked like he landed fine, but the tech official in the crowd, he looks like he saw something that was possibly unsafe, and that's why you saw the red light blinking. So he had the RII, which is the remote ignition interrupter, and he cut the truck off for safety reasons. And we keep going to these Monster Jam World Finals champions. Todd the Duke, a two-time former champion. He won the Freestyle Championship in this stadium back in 2014, followed it up the next year with a racing win. He, he's a, a driver that's in the record books for Monster Jam. Only seven drivers have accomplished a racing and freestyle world championship, and Todd LaDuke is one of them. He was the winner of Stadium Championship Series 3, competed at World Finals now in the All-Star Challenge, trying to win freestyle for his team. He's definitely a great driver. He has a loose style on behind the wheel and, and I think that really comes from his background as, as a uh, off-road racer so being a monster jam driver pretty much falls right into suit with what Todd does on his normal day. Five stadium freestyle wins in 2019 for Todd the Duke had a great night last night making it to the finals of Chicago style racing before falling to his teammate Ryan Anderson his son of a digger and now Todd the Duke making it happen a nice move for him don't know if he meant to hit that that way but certainly got the two tires up and a bicycle now for Monster Energy he loves doing the bicycles in his freestyle runs as well as the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge all throughout 2019 he has mastered that move. Todd's got a ton of momentum going in this run, but he just wasted a lot of time driving around. I know he had to save it, but maybe a cross thread here, a cross thread there. Um, he's got to make sure that he's picking it up because Team Fire are starting to bring it back and, and they're pushing hard. And Todd the Duke gets sideways on the jump and lands it on the front tires. Man, that was a rough landing, but a nice run for him. Got the big air, and he is now out of the truck. Maybe a little disappointed there uh, with that last sign he made to the fans. Todd LaDuke has done it all in this building, and now he will finish in eighth place thus far with that run. 7.751, not what he was expecting as a World Freestyle Champion. Your BKT Freestyle Top 5 remaining with Cynthia Gautier as your leader. 8.773 in Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice. Tyler Menega and Gravedigger right behind her in second. The Anderson Brothers are up next as Freestyle returns to Las Vegas. 
Welcome back to Monster Jam. Scott Jordan, Morgan Kane, and Leslie Mears delivering the action of these incredible Monster Jam superstars. That jump by Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice has put Cynthia Gautier at the top of the leaderboard for Monster Jam Freestyle. We are down to our final two competitors. They both share the same last name. The Anderson brothers are up next. Right now, it is Adam Anderson and Gravedigger representing Team Fire. It's always exciting when Adam Anderson and Gravedigger is out on the track. It makes me, I'm, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat right now because I know that he's got something to prove and he's out here to gain valuable points for Team Fire. Big run in the triple. And Adam Anderson and Gravedigger just missing, clearing the triple, bounces off and clears the final buzz. His dad upstairs watching and scoring this run. Keep it going, ride, ride, ride. High-speed moonwalk for Adam Anderson and Gray Digger. He has two World Finals Freestyle Championships on this track. And a great jump for him going clear across the buses. And he will try to get the save, and it doesn't happen for Adam Anderson and Gray Digger. That's a hard hit for Adam. It looked like he peeled the knuckle on the front end. And man, how did this turn out? the pure shock on Scott Buto's face. We have a new leader. It is Adam Anderson in Gravedigger. I mean, I'm all about a new leader because, you know, the last leader was three seconds in the air in a crash, um, but this one is totally off. I mean, Adam did a great job. He had good momentum, but I don't think it was enough for the lead. But you have our top five here. Uh, the, the top two, kind of negotiable. But Tyler Meninga and Gravedigger had a great run. Uh, should still be the leader. But you have Ryan Anderson, son of a digger for Team Ice. And he's coming out to burn it down just like Dennis said from the booth. This is what it's about. You have this guy, Ryan Anderson, son of a digger. He's one of the best in the sport, if not the best in the sport at this time. And he just carries so much momentum, always wide open. It's fantastic to watch. And, and honestly, as a driver, I learned so much from him. Racing last night, giving his team 24 points. And there's a triple whip at the top for the 12,000 pound Monster Jam truck. Ryan Anderson, the first overall pick in the draft, going again for a container backflip. And oh. now he's got a reverse a moonwalk there. So, how do you top that? That's tough. He's carrying so much momentum. And he was talking about the way that he was going to hit the triple, and it was going to be different than everyone else. And he did exactly that, and it threw him past the triple. Looks like he might have caught the back tire on the top of the bus when he landed on the triple. And it, that's, that's why he caught that tire. Now we know that's not going to stop him from doing what he does as he continues to jump. Another nice whip at the top of the jump on three BKT tires. Ryan Anderson won a freestyle world championship here in 2018. And his dad, the legendary Dennis Anderson, is watching. Gotta keep this momentum going. Dennis is stoked right now. Everybody on Team Ice is jumping up and down. The track officials must have seen something because Ryan was gonna tear this truck in half. And that's the icing on the cake for Team Ice. I don't know how he ended up continuing to go after that final landing on the jump he attempted, but wow, what a run for Ryan Anderson and son of a digger. There is a look at Team Ice watching and waiting for the score to come up. And there is your freestyle winner, Ryan Anderson and son of a digger doing it again. Won a championship here, won freestyle back in March and wins freestyle again tonight at the All-Star Challenge. And now the team is out on the track joining the freestyle winner as we await the announcement of the overall champion as well as the winner, whether it's Team Fire or Team Ice. But again, Team Ice dominating, winning all four competitions. Scott Buto put this team together with a purpose for a reason, and everything has come to fruition tonight in Las Vegas. Well, Capitan, he's got to be excited. He knows that he put this team together, picking from the draft. It's such an exciting time because when you feel 
feel that you have a team that can compete at a top level and win a championship, that's what they got done here tonight at the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge. The first two picks a couple months ago were the Andersons. They will finish one and two in freestyle as Ryan Anderson out in the crowd with new fans and old fans alike. What a night and what a weekend, not only for Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger, but for Scott Buteau and Team Ice. Your freestyle point standings, Ryan Anderson getting 24, Adam Anderson 23, Cynthia Gautier who had the lead for most of the competition drops to third, Tyler Menega and Grave Digger for Team Fire with 21, and then Colton Eichelberger in Max D also for Team Fire, rounding out your top five. Every point matters, 24 to the winner, one all the way down for that 24th position. We will find out who wins, Team Fire or Team Ice, but first, let's go down to the track with their freestyle winner, Ryan Anderson, son of a digger. So Ryan Anderson, you were the first pick in the draft and you were the clutch team player here to bring home the victory tonight for Team Ice. Man, it was a blast, that triple was crazy. This thing was eating trucks up, but the competition is dominated. Team Ice froze the competition. We had a blast, the trucks are tore up, but I gotta ask one thing, Las Vegas. Who had a good time in Monster Jam tonight? Woo! So what does it mean to be able to come in clutch and take this victory? Man, it was an absolute blast for sure. I'm glad you guys were here to support me. You guys supported my crazy dad. He's up in one of them boxes right now. He's the guy that made this sport. He's the dude that created Grave Digger. He invented freestyle. And that's why the Andersons, we are built and made to do Monster Jam. But if it wasn't for people like this guy right here, David Stanson, my crew chief, he kept that truck 100%, as well as all the other crew guys back there. If it wasn't for those guys behind the scene, we wouldn't be nothing, but mostly it's you guys. If it weren't for you coming out here, spending your hard earned money, supporting us for so many years, we see every piece of Digger merchandise. I see Son of a Digger stuff everywhere, Grave Digger stuff everywhere. You guys, are ma you make us. We run the way we run and we tear those trucks up because you guys support us and you guys want to see it. So we're going to do everything we can until the day we die to make sure you guys get the show that you paid for. Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, getting accustomed to Victory Circle here in Sam Boyd Stadium. Let's take a look at the overall event point standings where they win last night in racing and a freestyle win tonight. Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, 90 points. He is your overall event champion. Neil Elliott in Max D, also for Team Ice in second. And Jim Kohler in Avenger for Team Fire, rounding out your top three. But 24 All-Stars came into Sam Boyd Stadium. It was about that team atmosphere, Team Fire versus Team Ice. But Ryan Anderson, some pride on the line, some bragging rights on the line. And Son of a Digger is your overall event champion. So Ryan, tonight it looks like you did not finish the weekend outside of the top five in any competition here. Just phenomenal to take home so much hardware. You know, where do you find you know the drive and the inspiration to keep going so hard all the time? Like I just said, it's you guys, man, you fans. You guys want to see a crazy show and that's what I'm made to do. But I want to ask you guys, please, we want to keep doing crazy events like this. We want you guys to come back. We want to do this again. We want you to tell your friends, your family, Bring them out here and tell them how awesome Monster Jam is. Let them experience that experience. And I promise you one thing, I'm gonna give it everything I got every time I'm on the track because I want each and every single one of you guys to have a good time out here. Thank you again, and we wouldn't be nothing without you, man. I love you the most. A very proud member of Team Ice Ryan Anderson, son of a John Zimmer and Cynthia Gauthier, they got together and then we had a great draft and they did what they had to do to assemble this great team. Uh, and that's what it's all about, it's a team atmosphere all weekend at the Monster Jam All-Star event. So Scott, it seemed like your team had maybe the most cohesion and the most collaboration when it came down to choosing your picks for each one of the drafts each day and selecting the bracket. You know, how did you as the leader rally everyone together 
from so many different teams who are used to playing as individuals out here in the field of Monster Jam to come together as this team to make it work. You know, I said us all along when we did the draft, I said you had to swallow your pride, swallow the ego. That's what it's about. If you look around, we all have egos, we all have pride. But when you're doing something like this, you got to stay humble and keep yourself in check. We did this as a team. We drafted as a team. We collaborated as a team all weekend. And the result is this. Everyone, team, together, everyone achieves more. This is what it's about. It's about you, Monster Jam fans. Because of you, we get to do what we do. Thank you. And those are the three that started it all. John Zimmer, Dragon Eye, Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt, Dalmatian Ice, and Scott Buto, El Toro, Loco Ice, victorious tonight in Las Vegas. And we got started last night. It was early. It was a brand new event that none of the drivers had ever competed in, and it was the Monster Jam All-Star Chicago style. Ryan Anderson was your champion. From there, Brianna Mahan became the first ever best trick competition winner. Cody Saucier and Monster Energy started tonight off with a big win in racing and Ryan Anderson with another huge freestyle win in Las Vegas en route to the overall event championship, taking it home for Team Ice. Now that this weekend is over, make your plans for World Finals 21 in Orlando. Tickets available at MonsterJam.com. For Morgan Kane and Leslie Mayers, I'm Scott Jordan. Good night from Las Vegas.